Joining us as she does every week at this time, it's Tina Traster of the Rockland County Business Journal. Good morning, Tina. How are you this morning? I'm good. I'd like to have whatever he's having or she's having or who's a, whoever is hysterical. That's Jeff. He's 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 coming down right now, but um, hopefully things have been just as joyous in the world of, of Rockland business. Oh, so much joy, so much joy. So, Duck Duck Goose is the is the title of today's conversation. Um, also, uh, well, I think Clarkstown is turning into a reality show. Uh, I think it's official. So this coming Tuesday evening, there will be a public hearing. Mm -hmm. And the town is um, proposing uh, to, to adopt a redistricting map. Um, you know, every, every 10 years the census is done and uh, uh, municipalities um, redistrict. So, but in this instance, um, there is just a continuing um, fighting that is going on um, over uh, a lot of things in, in Clarkstown. Now, uh, if the redrawn lines um, are, uh, go according to the proposed map that's out there right now, um, we're looking at musical chairs, hence Duck Duck Goose. Um, well, two of the four wards would ha allow its incumbents to run again in, in a mostly familiar uh, constituency, um, the elected council members of wards one and four uh, will find themselves pushed together into the same ward to compete for a seat, uh, and it would leave one ward entirely open for, uh, I guess, new blood. Now, mm. council members Patrick Carroll, who's a Democrat, and Frank Borelli, who's a Republican, um, are, are both impacted by this proposal um, and are both very angry over what they say is Supervisor George Holman's attempt to squeeze uh, Borelli out of Ward 1, uh, which she has represented for eight years since the Ward District lines were established. Um, I think that Clarkstown possibly is the only municipality in the county with wards. Um, I'm sure that if I'm wrong, some caller will let me know. But anyway, the, the two council members did the, say... The, I believe it's the, the East Ramapo School District has wards, if I'm not mistaken. But other than that, I think they're the only ones, the, the, certainly the only town and village, that I think, with wards. Right, only town and village. I, but I believe it's the, the village, I believe the East Ramapo School Board, a uh, school district does have wards. Ah, that's interesting. Okay, thank you. I think, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> um, so the two council members say that town, the town official. okay, so here, they say that there have been several renditions of a new map to adhere to the 2020 census figures that they had been looking at. They were looking at them in, in May. There were three versions. We, we looked at all three versions. And um, none of those would have disrupted um, who represents which ward and who, can, who as an incumbent could run again. Um, but then this latest map, says um, the two upset council members, just seemed to come out of nowhere um, as a surprise and um, is a total disruption of the town's political representation. Now, um, this latest map that was drawn by uh, Skyline Consulting of Schenectady, um, and which will be the subject of the public hearing on Tuesday night in Clarkstown, what it does is it extends Ward 1 to the north, but it also shifts the boundary to the east. And with, with, that, with those moving of the lines, it, it essentially excises uh, Borelli, who lives on uh, Cavalry Drive in New City, it essentially excises him, him out of the ward that he's represented and pushes him into Pat Carroll's uh, territory of Ward 4. Um, and, um, you know, just so you understand, to take office, a council member has to live in the ward that they represent. Mm. So um, the council does not need to hold a uh, public referendum. Uh, or in this case, there's no supermajority needed. That's a, a subject we've been talking about a lot lately in Clarkstown. And if I have time when I finish this discussion, I'll, I'll get into that. Mm -hmm. um, you do also have a caller when, whenever you want to take that. Okay, let me finish this, this one. Or else if, I, if I lose my train of thought, there, there may be no coming back. Okay. <laughs> um, so Carol says that, um, and Amberell, they both say that this, this new map... Um, uh, comes as, as a surprise, a, a very unwelcome surprise, and that the three other maps um, 
would leave the ward represent representation intact. Not only that, but, um, and I, I looked at the numbers here, so Clarkstown has 86,912 people, uh, a po population of 86,912. And each ward ideally is supposed to have a little bit over 21,000 um, people in it. And um, <clears throat> when municipalities update maps, they, they go on what's called a 5% deviation. So, if the, five, so if, if the wards are within 5% deviation, they don't even have to um, adopt uh, a, a, new, a new map. Uh, so that's an aside, but it's also just a point that's worth making, is that they, based on where the numbers fall out right now, they don't even really need to, um, to, to have a, uh, a new map. Um, so anyway, Carol says that, that the redrawn lines um, are gerrymandered essentially to either bounce him or Borelli off the town council um, at a time when, as we know, the town council members um, are essentially over uh, at each other's throats over term limits. Um, this uh, has been going on now for a while, and we know that uh, the court case, um, the first major decision in the court case came down last week. Um, which was also pretty big news and essentially um, indicated that uh, the town attorney, uh, well, deputy attorney, Kevin Conway, um, uh, is going to represent the town to defend the town against a suit brought by the supervisor and a councilman against the town. Um, that's, that's a lot of words. Uh, but, but essentially, I'll, I'll go into that in, in, in one second. Um, the um, Judge Amy uh, Puerto, Rockland County Supreme Court, issued this decision uh, last week. Um, Borelli, and Counts, uh, Borelli and Carroll had tried to, had, had believed that in voting, uh, they had um, the right to hire outside counsel <clears throat> to represent the town in the suit that Holman and Councilman uh, Don Franchino brought against the town to get rid of term limits. And um, this, this uh, appearance last week uh, also raised the issue of an appearance of, of conflict because the town attorney um, uh, serves at the behest of, of the whole town council. So how can, um, the question is how can he represent the town? But the judge, even though she said in court last week uh, she questioned the appearance of a conflict, um, she, in, in her first ruling, she um, did not address conflict whatsoever. Um, she only made a ruling around a, one, a vote that was two to one. In other words, Carol and Borelli voted to hire outside counsel. Mike Graziano voted against it. And then the question became, did the two recused members, Homan and, um, and, and, and um, uh, Franchino, did, 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 did the two to one vote not represent a majority of the council? So uh, that's how the judge decided. She decided that two to one was not a majority and that it would have taken three votes, even though two of the, count, two of the council members um, had recused themselves. Uh, that's where she seemed to go with her ruling. That was uh, based on what they call standing. And so um, th these are all the things that are going on at the same time in Clarkstown. It's, mm -hmm. it's complicated, but you know, we, we've laid all of, we're laying all of this out uh, step by step so that people can understand this and not become frustrated. And, and it, it's important to understand what's, what's actually going on. Um, I'm ready to take a call now if someone's okay. still waiting. She's on right now. Good morning, caller. You're on with Tina Traster from the Rockland County Business um, Journal. Good morning. Thank you for taking my call. Hi, Sally. I just, hi. I just want to say very briefly to Tina a little congratulations to having been referred to as that woman many, many times <laughs> on uh, by one of the uh, town supervisors. Yeah, and you know, I think it's, it's, it's really unfortunate that, that, and I would say creepy and almost fetish-like, his, 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 his obsession uh, with me. It's, it's sad that he has a problem with the free press, but we all know how well, important the free press is, right? 
Well, I think you should wear it as a badge of honor. No one's ever called me that woman. I think I think you're right up there with Gloria Steinem and a few other noble women at this point. I, I would wear it as a as a compliment, Tina. Well, thank you. I guess I I need a good pants suit or something yeah. like that. <laughs> okay. Take care and keep up the good work. Thank you for your call. Thanks, Sally. Okay. Well All right. that was empowering i guess uh <laughs> well, what else is going on in the world of rockland county she, business? She, she speaks she she speaks truth um let's see what else is going on in the world of rockland county um we talked to uh the orangetown supervisor about the rockland cider works wasn't there a new development there since we've spoken last oh my well i mean i think we i think i brought everybody up to date on that um, did you want me to recap that? Because I can do that if you'd like. Um, that is also just, I mean, that is just up in the air. Um, <laughs> and not in a good way. Because it, essentially, I call it the tortured legal dispute um, in my latest story. Um, at, the 20, at the January 25th hearing, okay, um, a new judge, uh, Christy D'Alessio, um, basically... Um, asked everybody for more information, more papers. This is partly because the, the neighbors, the unhappy neighbors, um, are adverse to uh, putting up a bond, uh, which, was, which would have been required from them. And at the same time, uh, Rockland Cider Works, I suppose, is trying to still, you know, fight for its life and, um, you know, plans to go to the town, maybe goes, goes back to Orangetown to try to sort out this whole zoning issue. So this was not decided. Um, it is still very much open. Uh, there's also an appeals pending. This, this is a case that involves three separate entities and two different lawsuits. And again, if anybody really wants to get up to speed, Rockland County Business Journal is the place to do it because um, we, we peel back all the different lawsuits and, and, and you know, the meaning of them and where, where they're at. This is really, this is, this is ongoing. It's yet to be determined. Um, I am not absolutely sure um, as to uh, when these, I think most of the papers are due throughout the month of February. Mm -hmm. So I think maybe within the next two to three months, hopefully before the spring for them, uh, there'll be some information. But, um, uh, you know, bottom line, um, I, I, it's, it's, a tough, it's, it's a tough situation. Uh, I understand the neighbors, but I also understand that they have a, a unique business uh, that's an asset for the county. So it would be great if you could just get them all in the room, have some cider, and work it through. <laughs> just not in the neighborhood it's in because they don't want you there. I <laughs> find a find well, a neutral location. Yeah, exactly. Uh, well, Thanks, uh, Tina. Thanks, Tina. We got to run. I'm sorry, but uh, you can go find more at rcbizjournal.com, uh, of course, and uh, sign up for a newsletter. They're great. Thanks, Tina. We'll talk to you again on Monday.